Hello everyone, my name is Ms. Garcia and I am going to be leading a little workshop called Design-Based Learning. So once a week, we are going to be meeting in this room where we are going to be making some hands-on projects. I need all of you to pay close attention and follow directions. There will be a total of three classes in this room and I will be leading that workshop. So I hope you have fun and you also practice a lot of your speaking skills. Here we go. Let me walk you through what you're going to be doing. So what is design-based learning? Design-based learning is a way for, your, for all students to use their imagination. You are going to be making a 3D object. Each week you will have a new challenge. Your object should be never before seen, meaning we want you to make something new. I am going to give you a set of directions to follow and your job is to make something that fulfills those directions. Each design project will begin with a little scenario. I will tell you what that scenario is. Once you are done, you will share your design. There are a number of ways we're going to do this. You are going to share with a partner, share in a small group, maybe do also some video recording. At the end of six weeks, we will be presenting your projects to other classes that will be invited to come in so they can listen to your short presentation. The goal is to have fun, to use your imagination, and to practice sharing your ideas. That is a skill that all people need in our world. Teachers are going to show you this video so you can see a little bit of what this project looks like at the national level but you are not watching it right now. You can watch it a little later. Okay, now that you've seen the videos, you kind of have an idea of how we are going to be doing this. You are going to be working in small groups of about four people. Your job is to share the material. For this first challenge, each student is making their own design. You are sitting together to share the materials. You will be, again, in groups of about three or four. Each person needs to have a job. I will need someone to be the supply manager. Supply managers, you will get a basket, something like this. In this basket, you will put tape, maybe about two bottles of glue, and scissors for each member of your team. At the end, your job is to collect all supplies and bring them back to the front of the room. Second person, you are going to be the happy trash manager. What is happy trash? basically recycled, upcycled material. It is all clean material, but this is the type of material that you're going to use to make your projects. It should be cuttable. You can bring some stuff from home, but it should be clean and it should be easy to cut and glue. Happy Trash Managers, you will get a bag or a box and you will put in some supplies and you will take it to your group so that you can all share. Each team needs to have a team leader. Team leaders, I will call you sometimes to the front of the room, give you specific directions, and you will take it back to your team. I will need someone to be your timekeeper. Timekeeper is in charge of making sure you clean up five minutes before the bell rings. The last group to clean will stay in and help clean the room. Don't be the last one to finish. Make sure you are following all instructions. Also. Timekeeper, your job is to make sure everyone has helped to clean your area. If you have other material that you want, but it is on the other side of the room, you can walk quietly. You can walk over and ask someone to let you have some of their materials. You can also send your happy trash manager to the front of the room to get more materials. Use your time wisely. Do not waste time. Uh, I am very strict when it comes to rules. I've been teaching for 26 years. So make sure you follow my rules. This is a project I do out of UCLA where I train teachers how to do design-based learning. Do not play, do not throw, do not wear. Yes, do not eat my, well, my happy trash. Do not take, do not misuse. You are architects, you are engineers today and that's how I need you to behave. I want you to be creative, to think outside the box, to have some fun, 
I want you to keep your voices low. We're not yelling. You can stand, you can sit, you can sit on the ground, you can move around. I will tell you when it is time to clean up. If you do not finish, you could finish another day. Do not take your projects home. You will need them in class. You will need them each week. So what is it that you are going to make? A couple of things about behavior. I do not uh, allow any students to be off task. All students must be doing something at all times. Make sure you clean your areas. Make sure you are always doing something productive. You are either building, you are making something, you are gluing, you are helping someone else, you are cleaning, maybe you are writing, maybe you're doing some of your work, maybe you're doing some of your homework. Make sure you are not sleeping or playing or on your cell phone. I will take the cell phone away if you are not working. If you are not doing some work or you are playing around, here are my warnings. First time is a warning. Second time, going to move you out of your group and give you some other work. Third time, I might send you to another classroom to work on something. And if you are get into any big problem, I will send you to the office and we will call home. You will have to stay with me during your lunch time or after school and we will talk to your parent. So thank you. I know I will not have any problems because I never have had any problems with my students because everyone really loves DBL. What else? Okay, remember that summer school is a privilege. You can be sent home, right? DBL is a privilege. It's for fun to practice your speaking, your listening skills, how to work with others, how to problem solve, how to use your creativity. We are here to help if you have any problems, please raise your hand. There are three teachers in this room. These are the things you can bring from home to help you make your projects. We will make projects every week. You can use cotton balls, scraps, cardboard, egg cartons, tissue paper, bubble wrap, plastic wrap, paper towels, toilet paper rolls, foil. You can bring in party supplies. You can use pom-poms and craft sticks and straws. Make sure it is clean, no glass, no hard plastic, nothing you buy from the store, no toys. What else? Make sure that you do the best you can. There is no perfect way to do this. If you are confused, don't know what to do, just look around and ask for help. This design challenge is for you to practice how you think and how you come up with ideas. So what are you going to make? I like to get to know who you are. So you are going to make a little creature or an avatar. A creature is, can be like an animal, can be fictional. This is what I need and this is what I don't want. Your creature needs to be 3D. That means, for example, it needs to be able to stand. It needs to have maybe some legs, maybe a few. I do not want any drawing, no drawing, no pictures. It needs to be never before seen. That means I don't want to see a SpongeBob. I don't want to see a dog. I don't want to see a little robot. We've seen those. I want you to try something new. Maybe you mix an animal and another animal and you make something new. Every part must have a function. You have to be able to explain where is the head? Where is the hair? Where's the arms? How does it move? Be ready to explain. You have to have at least three details on your never before seen creature. It should fit on your hand, nothing too big. So about five inches tall, five inches wide. So not very big, maybe even smaller. Try to use colors that you like that are important. Be ready to do a presentation. Again, make sure that you do a few parts, not just one, make many parts on it. Make sure it's not too big or too small. Remember, no magic. Please don't say it's invisible. Please don't say there's a button and something comes out. It needs to be explainable. Make sure your presentation is 30 seconds to a minute long. 
All right, that's your challenge. Here are some examples of what students have done. Be ready to explain. How does it see? How does it hear? It is a creature. Pretend you work for Pixar and you are working on the new movie, Monsters, Inc. What kind of creature would you make? All right, here's another video that shows you what my students did last year. We did this at La Puente High School. This is three classes in one room. This was, again, 70 students working on DBL. What you're going to see is students first working in groups, planning, thinking, and then they're going to make different challenges. They're going to make a house. They're gonna make a creature. They're gonna make a house. They're gonna make new inventions. And at the very end, we are going to make a city, a futuristic city. And that is what you're gonna present in week six. After you do each project, you will be doing presentations, maybe some videos. And at the very end, you will present to other classes. That is DBL. I hope you enjoy it. It is a way to get you to practice a lot of your speaking skills. Thank you so much.